once, but against Nottingham Forest. He sustained a dreadful knee injury. And Brian Lodrop, another big occasion to grace with his talents. Well, in 1976, the cup final kicked off before 3 o'clock. We're in danger of that once again. And on that occasion, Rangers has scored before the clock struck 3 through Derek Johnston. So Hugh Dallas, the referee, who certainly shows some tension there in his face. It's a very big occasion for him. Although he has a lot of experience in international football and European ties, but once so young. Gilles Rousset, who has been given the credit for transforming the Hearts fortunes this season since his arrival. 11 shutouts in 29 matches. Hugely influential figure. Well, these formalities completed so quickly that the players really have to hang about by the way. Andy Gorham with a record of two out of two in cup finals for Rangers in the Scottish Cup and also in the League Cup, strangely enough. Never tasted defeat in a final for Rangers. Rangers chairman David Murray looks very relaxed beside his vice chairman Donald Finlay. Peter Donald, the, uh, the Scottish Football League secretary, beside Donald Finlay. Ian Durant, a late call up to replace Ali McCoy, who couldn't come through the warm up with his damaged calf injury. He was on the bench initially, but Durant replaces him. The 111th Scottish Cup final, sponsored again by Tennants. Starts with Hearts enjoying the first few touches of the ball, the pitch, I can say, in immaculate condition. And that will certainly be welcomed by both sets of players. John Brown has to keep the ball going. It came off the corner flag. First involvement here for Gascoigne. On this other big occasion, he will surely relish. McLaren, who's been protecting any injury throughout the season will have surgery next week that's going looking to be on the ball as much as he can early on Lodra coming deep the players trying desperately now to settle as quickly as they can David Roberts is well forward so is Gordon Jury a great chance there to take the ball and run but Paul Ritchie did well closing in on him discussion there between Bruno and Ritchie it was a tremendous first long ball by John Brown but uh, at the end of the day, good covering, but initially there was a chance there for Gordon Fury, but he just didn't pass an object quickly enough. So here's Alan McLaren. Good angle taken up there by Gascoigne. Forward goes Cleland. Third pass, not accurate enough. Through to the intercepts. Lauder turned it out for the goal kick to Hearts. So Lodrop and Jury, the front two, Billy, a very interesting pairing with no natural out-and-out -out striker there. No, I think obviously without uh, McCoy being available today, they're obviously looking to play those two through possibly the inside right and inside left channels. But I think that the big danger to Hearts is going to come from Gascoigne because it seems to me as though he's been given a lot of liberty, a lot of freedom to go where he wants and perhaps to support those front two. Good challenge there by God. Ferguson trying to release Laudra. Just quick enough to get there ahead of Ritchie. That came off Bruno. So the first corner kick of the match. Conceded there by Pasquale Bruno. There will be the calming influence for Alan McManus and Paul Ritchie, the two young men in central defence for Hearts. Richard Goff and Alan McLaren in the penalty box now for Rangers. Awkward one to clear there for Poynton. His experience also very important. Everton, Manchester City and Oldham. He's played for in his career to date. The only man left upfield by Hearts was John Cahoon. Picked up by Mackay, for Cahoon, in goes Ian Ferguson. Appeals for a foul there by Hearts, waved aside by referee Dallas. 
And the Hearts player on the ground, that's ominous. It's Gary Locke, the captain, who's down. He looks to be in a lot of trouble. Game continues, and Locke still on the ground in the centre circle. I'm well, surprised the ball has not been put out of play yet, and referee Dallas calls the game to halt. There's no question here that Locke is in trouble. I think he's just gone awkwardly there. He, he seems as though he's turned his ankle or perhaps twisted his knee, but certainly there was no contact and he didn't even get close enough to make the challenge. But uh, it looks a nice enough one. Yes, he seemed to catch his studs there on the surface. And buckle under his own weight. Concern there for Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown and Paul Hegarty, the management team at Tyne Castle. They won't want to lose the skipper this early, that's for sure. Alan Ray, the physio, carrying out the repair work. It's the knee, it's taking the damage. Anxious Hearts fans here. Gary Locke, very much a favourite, the 20-year-old. Ruffy Dallas allowing plenty of time for this spell of treatment. Jim Jeff is calling over Steve Fulton, trying to establish the extent of the damage, I think. The match will be restarted by a drop ball. With very anxious eyes on Gary Locke, I think, from the Hearts management. In the next few minutes to see if he can continue. The call returns that to Hearts. Headed away by McLaren, here's Fulton. Oh, oh, a vicious pass there, trying to find Alan Johnston. But we've had confirmation now of the formations. McManus and Ritchie, the markers at the back for Hearts, the young men. And Pasquale Bruno, the sweeper. Dave McPherson, wide on the right. Neil Poynton, wide on the left. Three in the middle, Locke, Mackay, Fulton. Cahoon and Johnston up front. his head up. A very similar formation being adopted by Rangers. McLaren, Goff and Brown at the back. McLaren went in the right, Robertson went in the left. Ferguson, Gascoigne and McCall in the middle. Jury and Loudrup up front. Loudrup trying to release Robertson, the pace is Searing once again. The cross not good enough though. Well, beautifully picked out there. David Robertson by Loudrop. And yet another problem there. Gary Locke has gone down. I think his cup final is almost over. We see no way in which he will to continue. That's John Brown's cross. It's gone behind for the goal kick. And I think this will signal the end for the young hearts captain. Well, such misfortune. He knows it already. You can tell in his face. He knows perfectly well. There's no way back for him this time, surely. Stretcher is now being called for. It will mean some reorganization for hearts. Yeah, I think that's just a, a follow-up to the, the first incident because he's certainly gone over and twisted his knee. To me, that looks, it indicates a, a, a fairly serious situation, but certainly one that uh, is going to prove difficult for Hearts at this stage. The pressure on the touchline now. Jim Jeffries and Gary Mackay are in close consultation. They're going to have to tinker with the side, make some adjustments here, because Lawrence and Robertson are the two outfield substitutes. They both play up front. Alan Lawrence is coming on. Has cup final experience for Airdrie. Well, this will certainly be a major blow to the Hearts' plans. There's no question about that, Billy. No, that's right, because uh, to lose your captain as early as in the game, and particularly an inspiring young player like Gary Locke, is, is quite tragic. But more importantly, they've got a very... The, the two outfield subs are both attacking players, so he's going to have to adjust his team formation. And as early as this in the cup final, it's going to prove very difficult for him. 
And already Gary Mackay is giving instructions to Alan Johnston, who's got a key role to change. There's the damage. Again, there was nothing unto Warren that. It's just clearly the knee was a problem before that challenge. So Alan Lawrence comes on much earlier, I'm sure, than he expected or even hoped. So Gary Locke clearly in pain, being carried behind the goal there. So what about the adjustment, Billy? What do you think here with uh, Lawrence on? What do you expect to see happen? Well, I, I can't honestly see Alan Lawrence or John Cahoon moving into that midfield, but uh, I would anticipate that Alan, Alan Johnson will be asked to play a deeper role. Perhaps a similar role to Gascoigne is going to be asked to play for Rangers, playing be behind the front two and support whatever attacks they're able to provide. Well, that's what's happened. He's dropped back into a central midfield role in the five. Lawrence joining Cahoon up front. Good header on there by Jury. Oh! And the goal kick's been given. Gordon Jury disagreed with the linesman Bobby Orr. And referee Hugh Dellis goes across to Jury. A little discussion there. The referee making certain that there's no repetition of that kind of descent. The ball in playing distance and Bruno making sure Jury couldn't reach it. He certainly took a little chance, Bruno, didn't he? But uh, really, as early as isn't the game, it's going to have to show descent as often as that. You're probably going to get yourself in some bother. That's McManus down to Mackay. An even more important role now for him. As the senior man in the heart of that midfield now for Hearts. Cahoon going to touch. So, goal kick it is. So, twisted knee confirmed from the track side for Gary Locke. The full extent of the damage still to be established. Well, it's all been a very unsettling kind of opening to the game. It hasn't really allowed either side to settle properly, the way the game has been broken up by these injury breaks. It's Gascoigne again, going very deep to get on the ball. Makes it even harder to mark. Here's Ian Ferguson. Something of a risk in playing Ian Ferguson. He hasn't played. Apart from the game against Kilmarnock when the league was won, he hadn't started a match on the 25th of February. So, Ferguson getting a late call for this cup final. Long way off that, Billy, at this stage of the season. It is indeed, but obviously... You know, Walter Smith's been preparing his team for the last fortnight. He's had a look at what he's got. He's seen what options are available to him, and he's thought this is the best one for him. The thing that surprises me just a little bit at this stage is Gascoigne is playing so deep. He's always playing alongside his, his defenders, and I would have thought they would have pushed him much further up the pitch, give support to his front two, and perhaps go, be able to break forward and put Hearts under pressure at the back. McLaren now in possession for Rangers. Good interception made by Mackay. He read that well. Cahoon showing lots of determination and Lawrence a lot of nimble footwork. Clear foul by Ferguson. The referee will have a war with Ian Ferguson, looking a little bit overzealous there in his challenge. It was certainly a late challenge. I don't think there's an awful lot of harm in it, but uh, Hugh Dallas is a strict referee and he's not going to allow things to go unnoticed and he, he, he's putting his authority on the game very early none the worse Fulton's free kick looking for Dave McPherson marked by his former teammate Richard Gall no way past McCall for Johnston or for McPherson Lloydrop was caught there by Johnston and then by McManus just for good measure and now the youngsters in his hearts line up Making an impact early on. Great running by Lloydrop. That was for Robertson. McManus was with him all the way that time. It's good play by Poynton. The headed pass back. Headed down by Goff to Brown. 
Too many a battle for Rangers together, these two. Interception is made by McManus. This is Mackay. Foul by Logo. Well, space at a premium in the centre of the field here. Both sides playing five-man midfields. McManus sending it along. Pointing has to help the diminutive hearts forwards by going into that forward position. Jones on it out. Rangers of the throw. A little bit of involvement here for Andy Gorham. Here's Brown again, marking once more. Very tight indeed in the middle of the field. Alan Johnston is indeed on Paul Gascoigne. Showing a lot of faith in the youngster that, putting him in that role. Here he is. Well tackled by Gascoigne. Gascoigne going to that tackle with Cahoon. It's very tough out there. Rangers have a free kick and Gordon Jury is injured. Well, I wonder too, Billy, if there's a possibility the Hearts think they can perhaps have Johnston play off Gascoigne, quite apart from Markham. Well, here we see Paul Gascoigne right in the centre of everything there, and there's one or two tackles flying in who you expect in the cup final. But certainly it's a feasible thing that if you get a good young player who's fit enough to stay with Gascoigne, keep pay close attention to him and perhaps break away when he's in possession. But again, we saw that tussle, and we can see how keen both sets of players are to get involved in the game. Well, it is a cup final, and both sets of players are playing it as though it was a match of real significance and importance, as you might expect. So the tackling is tough. Rapid Dallas will be working hard to keep things wraps in the opening half hour. He's done well so far. McLaren's free kick, looking for Gaw. Good header down that. Judy was too far forward. Poynton held up by McCall. Well, heavy tackling again, this time by John Brown on Lawrence. The old warhorse now, 34 years old, still with amazing enthusiasm for the fray. Robertson's header was straight back to Mackay. Ferguson's tackle. Offside against Jury. Linesman there, Bobby Orr from Kilbarkin. FIFA linesman. Correct decision by the, the linesman there, but Paul Gascoigne was annoyed at Gord Jury for venturing into the offside position because he was breaking very quickly from midfield. Mackay in possession again. Fulton drifting over to the right hand side here. That's Lawrence. Loudrop took up good position to receive the pass from Gascoigne. The support arriving now from midfield. That's for Jury. Not quite ready for that. Turned away there by McManus. Here's David Robertson. Ferguson! Good effort by Ferguson. Very well saved by Rousset. Superb little ball over the top of the defender there from, from uh, Robertson and Ferguson doesn't quite get a hold of it but uh, nevertheless it's an indication of the threat that possesses breaking from midfield like that. It's surprising in a way to see Ferguson doing more of the support work in the middle of the field than Gascoigne is at this stage. Gascoigne staying deeper. Offside on the far side against Lawrence. Now Alan Lawrence, 33 years old. Meadowbank, Dundee and Airdrie before Hearts. So Hearts now falling back to the middle of the field, allowing the Rangers back three to have the ball. Now Ferguson. The run was made well by Jury. He ran off Paul Ritchie from an onside position. Back it comes to Cleland. Complete miscue with the attempt to find Gascoigne in the middle. 
Fergus asking a lot there of McLaren. The build-up starts again, patiently from Rangers. And here's Stuart McCall. Loads up now on the right-hand side. Very hard to pick up the hearts. Bruno quickly in on the ball, the head of McCall. This is Gascoigne. The balls of anticipation around the stadium from Rangers supporters. Well held up by Mackay. David Robertson's head out was a good one. Well, he's been encouraged to get forward there. Really, an outside left, David Robertson. He's certainly prepared to break forward in this game, and I think that's part of Rangers' plan. Not all, the, all that far off the jack. Good connection with the ball, but uh, not all that far from making a real test for the goalkeeper. Got off in trouble there. In this time, that challenge on Cahoon committed the foul, which gives possession back to Hearts. Well, all types of attire for cup finals. One of the beer is real, <laughs> which is not maybe. Now the problem of Hearts is they don't have real height in the penalty box, apart from Dave McPherson when he goes forward. Now Rangers the counter-attack with Ferguson. Poor pass that, cut off easily by Ritchie. That's Johnston, under severe pressure. Straight away from McCall, he wanted Cleland to do the same. He says Poynton. Well, it's one option which Hearts just don't have an attack but they cannot afford to play high balls in well that's right and obviously looking at Gascoigne Paul Gascoigne playing so very deep but what we're seeing from Rangers is both Robertson and, and Clelland on the other side are, are prepared to break forward Loudrop's dropping off a little bit making those passes inside Dave McPherson for, for Robertson to use that pace and it's causing Hearts an awful lot of problems just for this particular match Johnson getting no peace at all from Stuart McCall, but Hearts have the throw. Stuart McCall wanted to debate that with the referee. That's Poynton's long throw. McPherson's there already. Goff wins it. Fulton. Clear foul there by Ferguson. He'll have to be careful. In fact, it's a yellow card. And the outburst of response will not help his cause. First booking of the match. 20 minutes gone. Ian Ferguson for persistent infringement of the rules, I think. This will be. In the early stage of the match, they have a little card too, Billy. Well, I just wonder, I just wonder if Hugh Dallas would prepare to let the challenge go. I mean, he's certainly in there, lady. He certainly brings Fulton down, but I honestly think it's his response immediately after it. Perhaps he's got his name in, into the book. And really, Hugh Dallas is going to impress his personality on the game, and players better be aware of it. There's Gary Mackay. Closed down so well by McCall. Once again, Goff not quite to the ball in the air. Rangers try to break with Loudrup. So still not clear evidence that uh, either side is completely settled. Gas going that deep roll. Hearts quite content to allow the Rangers back three to have the ball. Look at that, no pressure on the back three. It comes into the Hearts half before they start pressing forward to make challenges. That's McPherson's clearance. Good strong challenge again by McCall. Winning what really looked a 40-60 ball. Loudrop. Away from Ritchie. John Brown was in the box for that. Well, Rangers sending the central defenders forward, supporting the attack. Good change of pace by McCall. Space for himself, the offside flag up against Alec Cleland. Now it's gone down, but Hearts have a free kick anyway. For that challenge by McLaren and Cahoon. Cahoon coming short again. And he left Celtic from 1945 after being left out of that cup final. 
Evans draws, Poynton is too far in, he thought he was fouled by Clellan. Poynton still protesting to the referee. Dennis didn't appear to have a lot of chance of getting the ball the way it came in, but he certainly believed he's impeded by Clellan. Good awareness shown there by Nick Carson to get away from Robertson. That's going well, tackled by Mackay. This is Lawrence. The good effort by Lawrence. Turned over by Andy Gorham. It's a corner kick to Hearts. Well, they're here to make a game of it, all right. No question about that. Well, Alan Lawrence has got one thing in his mind. He's going to try and test the goalkeeper. It's a good shot and very confidently dealt with by Andy Gorham. But nevertheless, it'll give Hearts just that lot of heart. Steve Fulton with this corner kick to him coming short. That was great play by Hearts. Very inventive corner kick. Major defence equal to the task in the end though, but well, Hearts clearly had that from the training ground. Alec Cleland has escaped that appeal for a penalty from Neil Poynton a moment ago. Pelland, collected now by Johnston, he's found some space for himself. Oh, the light for little step over and go past Pelland. Headed away by Brown, that was a good cross, had there been a big centre forward in there. Bad tackle by Pelland, completely beaten by Johnston. That was really good, skillful footwork, this from Johnston. Oh, that's right, good footwork by Alan Johnston, but certainly Alec Clown could have been no cause for complaints here because it was a very rash challenge, not a lot of danger out there, he could have afforded to slow down, jockey his man, but no, oh, he dived straight in and I think his name titled the went in the book. For plenty, I think it was his first foul. He's cut noise with the referee, and here's pointing now with a free kick. Not too many targets in there. Both the young men from the back came up, McManus and Ritchie, to join Dave McPherson, but Poynton couldn't figure out any of them. Oh, Rangers captain Richard Gorch realises, if he had any doubts beforehand, that this is going to be a very tough final. Constantly talking to his teammates. And down in the track below us, there's some treatment being administered to Paul Gascoigne. Or perhaps it was a repair to a boot. I think that was a trouble. That was a matter that was put well, not any injury. A rear error by Gascoigne. Fulton runs straight into McCall. Lawrence inside for Pointer is well forward again. Looking for support. Gets it from Fulton. Fulton was fouled by McCall. This is a very good spell for Hearts. Still inside the opening half fire of a 10 Scottish Cup final. There are no goals on the board as yet, but the Hearts manager Jim Jeff is every cause to believe his side is a real chance here. Well, Fulton does really well there. He takes uh, Sean McCall out of the equation, gets brought down for his penalty, but in that situation, it's, there's not a lot of danger. But we well, saw Hearts work a nice corner kick, they may well work a nice free kick here. Mackay's in charge again. Cahoon's header. Cahoon had space inside the penalty box. That will be of some concern, I'm sure, to the Rangers' management. They've obviously worked on the fact they don't have a lot of height in that penalty area, but threw that ball in nicely. The defenders can't quite get to it. A little, look, a little look less of a touch, it might have been dangerous for Andy Gorham. Good running again by Loudrop. Good release the pass for Cleland though, he's caught well upfield there. It's McPherson. Rousset in a hurry to get that away before Judy closed him down. Holmes did well, but Ferguson got the head of Cahoon. Well, the tactical planning in this game, Billy, really must have been very interesting indeed, and we see the fruits of that right now. Teams cancelling each other out in the middle of the field. 
Well, that's happened, but uh, Paul Gascoigne started to be a bit more adventurous, started to push forward that little bit. But certainly Alan Johnson's been detailed to mark him. That'll be a very interesting contest. Crulton now to Poynton. Here's John Brown, space to come forward. Started his life with a marauding left back, so this is not too unusual for him. Delightful control from Gascoigne. Once again, Arts doing very well and marking shows in the middle of the field. Goss frustration was clear there. He had no Rangers player in space to release the ball to. McCall is trying to change that now. It means even more energy required to make the runs, find the space. Gascoigne. Or Ferguson. Mellon makes the run, but that's too far ahead of him. Shows how difficult it is to play telling passes, such as the quality of the marking at this stage in the game. Gilles Rousset, not too trouble in the match. A couple of decent saves, notably from Ian Ferguson, but hasn't been too busy. Collision, says the referee, between Fulton and Ferguson. Well tackled there. Well now, that decision goes Rangers' way. And it did appear as though McLaren was a culprit. Well, I think in actual fact both players left the ball, so I think that would have been a toss-up as to which one it should have gone. Yeah, certainly Fulton is a bit uh, dangerous there, and that attempt by Jury. Almost effective for Rangers. After the good work on the flank by Robertson. Johnston well tackled by McLaren. That's for Lawrence to chase. Across goes Richard Gore. A full stretch there to beat Lawrence to the ball. Point in you had the throw. Richard Gore does well here because he, he's got the advancing pace from, from Lawrence there, but times his challenge well. Johnston fouled by McLaren, the former Hearts player. And his name is a Hearts player for this transfer at the end of 1994 to Rangers. Past the half hour mark now. Lieutenant Scottish Cup final wide open. Here's Lawrence. Time to come into a shooting position there. McCall realized that at the last minute. Richie with Judy. Determined challenge by the young man. Here's McCall. Robertson free on the left. Low drop. McManus goes to put him under pressure. I guess going. Generate a reaction from the fans on both sides. Fouled by McPherson and Loudra. Quickly taken by Brown. Here's Robertson. Gascoigne doing some pushing inside the area. Debate there with Alan Johnston. Bruno calms him down. Fight here for the players. The ball is returned to Gilles Rousset. But I think Hearts, well, they must have been dreading a possibility of losing an early goal. They've come through that phase and now look to be better and better. Well, they certainly seem to be enjoying the contest now. And you know, when you consider they've lost a skipper early in the game, but one, one point of danger to them just at the minute for me is the fact that Robertson's prepared to break forward. His pace is causing problems down that side. But you know, Rangers still don't look as though they've got an actual centre forward and that is always going to be a problem and even if you get balls in from the wide position you need someone in the middle there to convert them. Lawrence putting golf under pressure. Rangers back three cope calmly. Gillis passed off from McLaren. Foul against Ferguson. It's 
challenge on Lawrence. He has to be careful, he's been booked already. Steve Fulton leaves this now to Alan McManus. Pointing the target. Baron identify the danger there. Gascoigne. An ambitious pass that up the line. They knew the worst of what happened would be the throw. Walter Smith remains in the director's box. Still not tempted to come down to change anything. He's not happy though. Ferguson now to Robertson. Call very deep. Was Ian Ferguson again? A misunderstanding there. And then John Brown thought that Big Fest was going to collect that easily. That's well won by Brown. Looking for Judy. He was taken out of the play by Mackay after the ball had gone. Tremendous enthusiasm that John Brown's got for the game, but clearly these are sucked today by Gary McKay. Gascoigne again over the set piece. Richard Goff makes a run inside the area. He's the target. Rousseau's punch is not Complete pitch cue, but now McCall. Ball's done well by Fulton. Loudrop. Well tackled again by Fulton. Ferguson to Robertson. Oh, that's good play by Lawrence. The counter attack now. Oh, and for Hearts. That's Johnston looking for Cahoon. A little bit of a hurry that with the pass, and that has made it easier for McLaren. That's great control again from Gascoigne. Judy. Loudrop. Cleland makes the run outside him. Good play from Rangers. Well, the pass from Brian Loudrop. Surprising enough. Not judged properly. So, rest point there for the last defence. Good ball. Rishi does well here to get the punch, but it falls to, to Loudrop. And really, he should be doing better. He really missed, miss hits that shot there. Again. But good defending from Hearts here. They get out quickly to shoot McCall and deny him any chance of a, of a strike at goal. Goss had a return there by point into Lawrence. There's McLaren. Jury's very quick. Ahead of Ritchie. Loudon. Well tackled by Bruno. Still the pressure on the Hearts defence. Well, Jury, I'm sure, was trying to play that low across his face with the six yard box. Apologises to his teammates in the middle. Well, better news from the Hearts camp, from the dressing room, is that Gary Locke's injury is not too bad. He's certainly not able to play, clearly, as he was removed, but his twisted knee does not require any hospital attention. Jury to Loudra. That's good running by a load of a chance here for Rangers. That's the other. Hearts were ripped asunder. And Lodrum's finish was deadly. It's only his fifth of the season. A tremendous finish by, by Lodrum. But what a goal. This is a contender for the goal of any season. Lovely instinct to play. But here he keeps his head. Knows where the goalkeeper is and just knocks it past him into the corner of the net. No chance for the goalkeeper. But uh, certainly a sensational goal that Rangers conjured up there to open the scoring. Well, after competing so well for so long, Hearts have gone behind. And Rangers are notoriously difficult to claw back once they've got that lead. 
Slightly more short of your spirit in this hot side. And we're looking to head back very quickly indeed. Well, an expert finishing there from Laudrup. One on one with the goalkeeper. Even the massive frame of Gilles Rousset unable to cope with that effort. about six and a half minutes left in the first half plus some stoppage time we're in a crucial phase in the game because Hearts really have to hang on here at least to half time the second for Rangers now would be very difficult to combat an offside against Gascoigne great credit here due to Gordon Jury for the quality of the pass he knew exactly where Laudra was he was quick enough to get in behind Bruno super goal it was a tremendous goal because if you remember Laudra was involved in an initial pass in, in, into Jury and he then made the run in behind the Hearts defence and when the pass came he was there to finish it off well, Walter Smith still not looking entirely happy Rangers manager by no means playing ceiling in the opening half hour. That goal from Laudrup though has turned the initiative completely Rangers way. I think Rangers tactics were obviously not to lose anything early in the game and in, I think the previous games against Hearts they've lost something early they then had to throw themselves against Hearts and Hearts picked them off that little bit. And I think that that was one of the reasons Gascoigne was playing so deep. He was there to take the ball and to perhaps to protect it, 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 his back players. But it's worked very successful with that magnificent goal. Well, I said we're hard to profit against Rangers in the past by sucking them in and striking on the break. In a fashion which Rangers are really are fast masters at. But now the complexion of the game has changed. Hearts have to do some chasing here. McLaren, McCall, Lowdrop warming to the task. Interception made by McPherson. Judy closing in. Well, it really has been a fascinating tactical battle in this first half. One of the problems, obviously, these sides know each other so well, it's difficult to be a surprise, but here's Gascoigne now with Ferguson outside him. Gascoigne going himself. Still Gascoigne. Just about a yard too far ahead of him, that, as he turned inside. A measure of his amazing confidence. He's marvellous at running out defender, that close control of it. He just gets too much of a touch here, otherwise Hearts would have been in deep trouble. But oh, he's tremendous at going at defenders. Lodrum's corner. And McCall back to Ferguson. Bellin on the right. Goff's header! Brilliant save by Rousset. Now that may turn out to be crucial in the match. Jules Rousset again with a magnificent stop. Goff was denied. Well, Gilles Rousset's contribution has been amazing all season. That may turn out to be absolutely vital. And had Rangers gone too ahead at that stage, you would have fancied them strongly to hold on comfortably, but only one goal in it. The game very much alive. There's Lawrence, and now Mackay. Poynton. Fouled to the back by McLaren. It's that, he that header of, of Gossamer, but it, it gets up so well. Beautiful header, but once again, as he's done so often this season for Hearts, Bruce makes a good save at a very crucial time in the game. So Hearts have a chance now to put some pressure on Rangers. Steve Fulton with that sweet left foot will take this free kick. Person's in the box. So is Paul Ritchie. He's done well. Lawrence is there. Good effort there by Hearts. And 
Andy Goodham looking so calm. Well, Jim Jeffries checking his watch. This was close. Again, Hearts have worked very well at the, the, the free kick situation. The dead ball shaking have been very good. They almost got themselves back into quality there. Our Gascoigne. Loud run. Pellin hugging his right touch line. Laren is his support. Jury. Loud drop. Jury looking for Pellin, expecting him to make a run, I think. This is Cahoon. Laren brings it clear as Cahoon and Gascoigne clash. Here's Robertson. Bruno with the second attempt gets the ball away. Well, going into the final minute of the 45 in the first half, but there will be a fairly lengthy spell added because of the injury to the Hearts captain, Gary Lott. Carson's cross blocked by Brown. What a strong play by Brown, very determined. Well, they're enjoying this, all right. The run is made by Gascoigne. Foul oh, at the end of the area. There's trouble here for Paul Ritchie. Magnificent midfield play again from Gascoigne. Pointed to where he wanted the pass. Beautiful pass from John Brown. Great running, great break from Gascoigne. And unfortunately, that uh, he brought down before he could do anything else, but. I think young Richie's maybe just a, a shade lucky to just get with the yellow card there. Well, indeed, the referee's view could have been more serious because there was an obvious goal-scoring opportunity for Gascoigne had he not been fouled. Walter Smith is coming down now to the track just before the interval. There will be a hold-up here while Gascoigne gets attention. But look at the distance he makes here. Brown's in possession. John Brown does not mean this one. It's perfect passing. Gascoigne is... Makes a brilliant run to get in behind the defenders. Forrest is just a little bit unlucky in the sense that he's arrived too late and he probably didn't appreciate the pace at which uh, Gascoigne was getting there. It's a very heavy tackle, although in fairness, I think Richie was surprised by Gascoigne's pace. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, he was a bit unlucky and he obviously he'd, he'd no option other than to get into the challenge. But uh, I think perhaps Hugh Dallas is just. Uh, be that bit lenient with him, perhaps. He's given him the benefit of the doubt, the young man, Paul Ritchie. I don't think he was malicious with that. I think he really believed he had a chance of getting to the ball. And Gascoigne just stepped up a gear. Gascoigne certainly felt that all right. Remember, he didn't complete the 1991 FA Cup final for Tottenham. That horrendous knee injury. But it does appear to be all right now. Well, no, I think from this free kick, because one he would normally want to take. Loud drop, I think a one with him. So is Ian Ferguson. Is he all right to take this? Well, into stoppage time at the end of the first half. We could have three or four minutes of that, though. It's a great chance again for Rangers. Here's Gascoigne. Good positioning by Roussey. That made it comfortable. The wall did his job. Rousseau was well placed. Well, it's down to good position by the goalkeeper because he's anticipating which way Gascoigne's going to take it. And he makes it look so easy, doesn't he? Lawrence Henner, met there by Bruno. Well, an eventful first half, Billy. Rangers good value? I think they is, just surely because of the, the, the brilliance of the goal, but, you know, it, it was strange because... Well, you're getting the chance for the second, it could well be now, it's touch lets him down. What an opportunity that was, created by fretful defending and determined work by Jury. It really is bad defending, they get, the two central defenders get themselves all in the mix-up. He's made by Haas tactically, but they do appear to be out with the same formation. 
sure that'll be certain the request made of players to get closer to their opponents than they were for spells in that first half. Here's Cleland over Rangers. Bruno's clearing head up. Low drop against Bruno. Against McManus rather. It's back with Gascoigne. This is McCall. Offside surely against Robertson, no. Eventually raised his flag. The referees acknowledged that and told Jules Rousset to continue. Well, a very late flag, and David Robertson looked to be yards offside. Here's Gary Locke being helped down to the dugout to watch the second half. Well, Walter Smith didn't look at all happy at the end of that first half. Any thinking now why he may be. Perturbed, really? Well, I, I think you've got a cup final situation. Um, there's always some some problem, but you know, at the moment Rangers just seem to be continuing their ascendancy in the game. They look more part of this half, and you know, I think Hearts have really got to start pulling out the stops because the cup is gone at the minute. They've got to start getting themselves back into the game. They've got to start being more demanding about their attention in midfield but really more importantly they've got to try and get some some forward play because we've really not seen very much of the, of the, the hats forward at all we really haven't seen very much of any support down either side and no at this stage rangers have really got the game to themselves and here's gascoigne holding off Poulton, picking out jury good build-up play again from rangers this is Quellen. Free kick given there, but a bit of pushing off the ball, I think. Gascoigne frustrated. Good tackle there by McLaren, allowing McCall to take possession for Rangers. He was fouled and turned by Cahoon. A miscue there by Gascoigne, but coming to no harm for Rangers. They really have taken the game again by the scruff of the neck at the start of the second half, Rangers. Hearts determined, I'm no doubt, to get... There's still the players on the ball, Johnston and Fulton, especially the creative men in the middle of the field. They've been very quiet indeed. This is Roberts. Foul <laughs> by McPherson. Walter Smith on the track, not looking too happy yet. Back with Gascoigne, the chance to run at the defence. Bruno comes to meet him. Now Lodra. That's for Gascoigne. He was on site. Delivery wasn't quite good enough. Don't like that time. This is Judy. Now Ferguson. Forced to go back to McLaren. Jury's pass, off goes loud up on the run again, followed by McManus. A severe test for young McManus, this, looking after Loudra. And a bloomer by Rousset. Who would believe it? It's a second for Loudra. Rangers to a head. Well, a sense of stunned amazement around the stadium about this. Oh, you certainly wouldn't believe that from a, from a goalkeeper of Russ's quality. Initially, it's tremendous play by Loudre out in that position. He, tor he torments the Hearts defence, turns them a couple of times, and then push it. Really a disappointing ball in the middle, but lo and behold, you would never believe it. Uh, you would see Russ do something like that. And really, for me, the cup is well beyond Hearts now. The Frenchman looks on, head in hands. A hero for so much of the season for Hearts. It really was a poor ball by Loudrup. And yet it's given Rangers a second goal and a 2 0 lead. Well, what a blow to Hearts that is. A poor ball. Should have been very easy for the keeper. No one making it run in the near post. No problem at all. Rangers in possession again, and all the 
exhortations of Jim Jeffries at half time. Billy Billy going for nothing now. He couldn't do a count of that. Well, if anything, that the second half really started with Rangers having stepped up another lot bit of a gear. Uh, you know, obviously Gascoigne's enjoying himself, but Loudrop's had a truly magnificent game. That he certainly scored the two goals. His overall play has been excellent, and really it's a display that Rangers can be very pleased with. Now Jury running at Bruno. Another chance for Rangers, queuing up in the middle. Here's Clement. Well, a very good chance again. Bruno turned it over the corner. Well, whatever it was that Jim Jeffrey said to Hearts, they really haven't paid heed to it. Here's another opportunity, and really Alec Clement should be doing better than, than miss it and shot here, but not this moment. You know, Hearts have got a mountain to climb. And potentially in the end of a drubbing. There's Loudrop. Rolf's header. Well, it comes in. Well, testing the confidence again of Russi, I think. There's Loudrop. Turned away by McPherson. It's a siege now in the Hearts goal. And one more surely would end it. Loudrop looking for a hat trick too. Yeah. This is good play by Loudrop. That shot by Clown goes across and Loudrop comes across here and puts the ball in. And really at this stage they're really tormenting the Hearts defence. Paul Gascoigne's corner. And off the crossbar from Ian Ferguson. Well, you know, fear for hearts with every range of attack. It's just a typical ball into the middle there, and a good enough header. <laughs> the space that he's got there. If he had missed it, uh, Goff was right behind him to have, a, have an attacking header. And really, hearts have really got to pull themselves together. The experienced players have got to work very hard to keep the youngsters in tight. One Hearts defender was off the ground there for that corner kick. All the Rangers fans now enjoying the carnival atmosphere. Ali McCoy looks on, missing out on another cup final. The referee having a word with Alan Lawrence and John Cahoon. Cahoon committed the foul. I suspect Lawrence may have said something. Then the message there from the referee Hugh Dallas. Confirm confirmation of the official attendance 37,730. Making lots of noise. Brown playing into space, he used the pace there of Jury. Jury against Ritchie. Goal kick's been given. Very stern test for these two youngsters, McManus and Ritchie, at the back for Hearts now. So it's the last time we'll see the old South Stand at Handen, such a familiar landmark in Glasgow, set to come down to complete the refurbishment of the stadium. Boynton's header. Off wins it. That's Lawrence. To win inside. Brown's clearance. Loudrop skipping away from McManus. He has Jury to his left. They may go along here. Now it's Jury. Faced by Bruno. Well, Jury goes down. He appeared to be caught by Bruno. Jury certainly thought so. Referee Dallas couldn't have been better position. And he's ruled that out. Well, a break, I think, for Hearts. Johnston running into trouble. The ball of Gascoigne. It's a free kick against Hearts. You know, Don Jury goes out the defender here, makes good ground. I think it was accidental, to be quite frank with you. Well, the law's changed. The tension's not required anymore, as of last summer. I think Bruno was lucky. And this time Alan Johnston's being warned by the referee. Now well, Hearts must look after the discipline too here. Things are beginning to look ragged for them. Bedlam and around the stadium from the Rangers fans. Looks like the double. 
unless hearts can drag something from their reserves of courage and determination the turn is around Ian Ferguson I'm a call Gascoigne's pass releases Blaugrup last great play by Blaugrup no one in position to collect there Ferguson now to McCall. Jury. McCall again. Well, some faint appeals there for a pass back, but that would have been very unfair, I think, in a Hearts defender. The referee's here too, more importantly. The wrestling match goes on, and Goff is penalised. But his attention's on Cahoon. Must be very awkward with such a height advantage. Challenge fairly. John Robertson will be introduced. Here's Johnston. And now Mackay. Strong play again by Gary Mackay, but the Rangers defence sequel to the task. Andy Gordon takes over. clubs this season last two won by Hearts Ibrox by three goals to nil and Tynecastle by 2-0 previously Rangers won both matches 4-1 at home 2-0 at Tynecastle so this decided going Rangers way and the prize is the Scottish Cup Brown surging forward again Bruno required help there from McManus. Low drop to Cleland. Back towards Ferguson. Pointing red that well for Hearts. Fulton skipping away from a call. Now Lawrence. Held up well by Gore. Gascoigne takes over. Brilliant play from Gascoigne. Now McCall. Jury free again on the left. Well, he had low drop and McCall in the middle. Jury not quite too deadly coming in off the left like that. Hearts will make a change. It really is. It's a good move by, by Rangers. God, Jury gets himself in a good position. There's a couple of options open to him. I think he goes to the wrong one. Doesn't hit the target, but a ball across the face of the goal that he had. He had supporting players might well have been better, but. You know, for Hearts at this minute, Jock, it's really dangerous because the Rangers seem to be able to attack it well and really Hearts at this particular moment don't seem to have any answer. Pasquale Bruno looks disbelievingly towards the bench as he's withdrawn to allow John Robertson to come on. So, a total change of tactics for Hearts. These supporters muted, as you might expect. But it looks as though Hearts are going to have back four. McPherson, McManus... Ritchie and Poynton and they're trying to get three up front Lawrence and Robertson with Cahoon on the left and Johnston on the right total change of tactics now well Hearts have to do something drastic that's for Jury, another chance get it in well David Person cuts off the cross so here's Johnston Cahoon now in the outside left position. Looks like a 4-4-2 in fact with Johnston. Mackay, Fulton and Cahoon across the middle. Robertson and Lawrence up front. Lawrence now to Cahoon in his new role. John Brown's header goes straight to Poynton. Well tackled by Ferguson. Gascoigne with Judy ahead of him. Lodrup coming on the left-hand side. Three against three. Lodrup was fouled there. Three kicks being given to Rangers. The advantage all could have been applied. Alan McManus was the culprit. That allowed Hearts to get men back. But evidence also, some of these Hearts players struggling. 
stamina up. They had to work so hard to stay in the game, but you can see evidence there. But very slow in coming back there to support the defence. Loudra waits for Goff to arrive. It's a very adventurous formation that Hearts now have got. Obviously, they've got to try and get themselves back into the game. They've got to score a goal. But I think with this, this formation they've got now, the big danger for them is the way Rangers are playing, they're going to be able to cut through that back four of keys. This is McCall. Away from Mackay. Forward comes Robertson. Loudra. Makes space for himself, but turns straight into Mackay. Advantage applied there is pointing, takes the pass from Fulton. And now Hart are exposed. Brown comes forward, leaves it to Gascoigne, Jury to the right, Loudrup to the middle. Trying a little bit too much on the ball that time, Gascoigne, he's done out by Fulton. Something drastic attempted by Hearts to get back in this match. Inside the closing third of the game, inside the final half hour. Gascoigne showing no ill effects on that tackle from Ritchie just on half time. Offside against Robertson. Possession retained with ease in that position. Kai trying to do something about it, he's not content to watch Rangers dominate in that fashion without doing something about it. But Gary Mackay just showing his position just a little bit there. I don't think there's an awful lot in the, the, the after challenge, but uh, well, I just think frustrations are building up in the hearts players. They've got to watch some discipline at this stage. Well, the referee has a war with both players, very experienced players both. Guy. In fairness, I mean, you can't really stand back and watch if people struggle about that without doing something about it, making some tackles and getting about them. I think you've got to be able to time your tackles just a lot more better because you're going to put your team in more trouble. You, you commit a rash challenge at this stage, you're liable to get sent off, and that's not going to help your team. Gascoigne finds Jury. Both former Tottenham players, Gascoigne and Jury. Scraps for Hart. Alan Johnston finding a bit of space in the flank here. That's great, skillful play by young Johnston. The pass reaches John Robertson. Well, I think he expected Dave McPherson. Well, Goff got the ball and got out for a goal kick. So the Robertson. David Robertson, that is. John Robertson was battling hard for it, here's Alan Johnston offside against Lawrence the referees acknowledge that now and Rangers have a free kick one of the tragedies for Hearts when you see Alan Johnston in his natural position he looks so talented, he's got the ability to take the defenders on but really he was miscast in that role of trying to contain Paul Gaspar well, fair to Jim Jeffries forced upon him somewhat by the Early injury to his captain, Gary Locke. Carelessness <laughs> there by Ferguson, allowing Cahoon to take possession. Inside is Lawrence, good running there by Poynton. Great engine, Neil Poynton, gets up and down that left-hand side. So well, perhaps, even when they've gone to a back four, he's still supporting. 
He's certainly worked hard throughout this game. He's been prepared to break forward. He's so unlucky here not to get a ball into the middle. March 11th final. Five victories so far. Not since 1956 when they beat Celtic here by three goals to one. Jury into the wide position, but Loudrop knows exactly what to do here. Ball in the middle, across the front of the defenders. Jury makes a good pace, goes across the front of his marker. Good connection, the ball's in it. Lovely ball in the middle, gives him an opportunity to cross the defender. Goalkeeper's got no chance. Well, these two young defenders, Alan McManus and Paul Ritchie, finding it so difficult. That was Ritchie beating the ball there by Jury, playing against top class opponents in a major final it always was going to be a major task Billy well definitely was and you know you hope it's not too hard a lesson on young talented players like this but Lundrop delivered that pass to perfection he put it in at the right pace he put it in at the right height Gordon Jury timed his runs so well and didn't have to make a desperate connection he didn't have to swing, swing hard with it but just guided it in the corner of the net Jury's pass, here's Robertson, he's on his own here now. A little stumble giving McManus the chance to recover. And Robertson's gone down. It looks as though he's twisted something. He's in the ground, his hearts bring the ball out. And Steve Fulton sportingly turns the ball out to allow attention for Robertson. Here's this goal again. There's the, there's the initial pass, but look, Loudrop knows he's sized up the situation, he knows what to do. And he delivers this, this ball into midway perfection. But all credit to Jury, he's timed his run brilliantly, knocks it into the corner of the net. This is David Robertson, and now I think this is this little knee problem that he's got. Overstretches there with the ball, tries to get up, and possibly just demands too much of himself. started early here at Hamden among these Rangers fans a hearts renowned for the spirit but this really is asking too much surely they've come back from this the Rangers bench they've got a Petrus Ian Durant looking on hopefully to become involved in the action Robertson stays in his usual place Under the pressure by his old teammate John Robertson. Clarence, more than seven years at Tank Castle, exchanging pleasantries there with Andy Gorham. Really thought Gorham should have done more to help him there. I think he's asking just a little bit much of Andy Gorham there. Look at those fans, they've come here to celebrate, and they haven't had an awful lot of excitement for them today, but they've prepared to show the team how much they want them to do that. Well. There's Robertson, blocked by McLaren. The fine show of the heart supporters with the flags and the scars waving. The spike being down by three goals to nil. Here's Johnston. The block was made by Robertson. Oh, and Johnston just a bit of skillful a player as there is in the country at the moment with the ball at his feet attacking a defender like that. Goes both ways with such ease. Great sleight of foot. Gordon Robertson may be reflecting this could be the last chance for a cup in this middle. Gordon with a punch. Not quite what Jury intended, but it's effective. Jury against Mackay. 
four against two. Here's Lovra. That's Jimmy the four. Gascoigne. Great block by Rousset. Excellent goalkeeping. But every attack from Rangers now carries menace. Well, they're breaking it well here, aren't they? And really, you know, I'm surprised Michael Lodo delivers it. so many good passes. That one just overhit it just a little bit. And all credit to Rousset. Good save. Or even his brother Brian. So he's been flagging in the far side. That's Jim McBurney from the Indy. It's his last match. The senior official retires on the age rule after the match. There he is, giving his instructions to Lodra. Calling over referee Dallas. Just making sure the players retreat for full 10 yards. There's Paul Gascoigne. For Rousset. Well, I reckon he may have played then in his career and never make another mistake like that, Billy, across the second goal. Yeah, that's the problem with being a goalkeeper. You make mistakes like that, it's highlighted so much, particularly in the cup final. But he's been a tremendous signing for Hearts, and I really think an awful lot of their, their rise to, to what they have achieved this season has been down to the fact that he's been so stable at the back. That's going on, got doing a bit of showboating here. For Jury, but Rusi again will win that. A private little bet going on between Jury and Gascoigne about who'll score most goals in the season. Jury looks to have the edge now. 21 the total against 19 for Gascoigne. There's Alan Johnston. Back with Fulton. Round the full stretch. Lodge up to the call. This is Judy. The pass has been played with such accuracy now. That's Gas going to Lodrup. Set up for Brown. Well, they could have been a good goal. First time there. They regret that now. Lodrup's back here. intended for Brown again. Well, they're playing a game in exhibition style now. Well, I realise it's just party time now for Rangers. You know, they've got, they've had so much control of the game this second half. They've got the goals that were important, and really they're so confident in playing so well. <laughs> David Robertson, across it comes to McLaren. Gascoigne. Free kick it was taken very quickly. Robertson was doing the holding. Loads up to Judy. Alan Johnston, the man, the man. We can make a tackle on Judy, perhaps. Gascoigne. Back it goes towards Judy. Big man is his clearance. Well, Rangers are really toying with Hearts now. And it really is important for Hearts to retain the discipline because I can imagine one or two players getting a little bit uptight about this in the maroon colours. But some very proud players play for Hearts this afternoon. They won't like this one bit. Pointer. Walters pass. Cahoon. Robertson. Cahoon again. Good build-up play from Hearts. Lawrence back to Fulton. Shooting chance perhaps. Not going right for Fulton. Started out as a very promising man with you at Celtic, Billy. Yeah, he is a talented player and really I think that uh, I always felt he had much more to see than what he has achieved. It, you know, it, perhaps he just lacks that little bit of confidence and belief in his own ability, but he really has he had the ability as a young man to be a real outstanding player. Jury to get up there and the challenge with McPherson. It's back with McManus. Johnston looking for Robertson. And Goff taking no chances there. 
Well, perhaps didn't hear anything coming from Andy Gorham. now looking for what I think is only a consolation now. Here's John Robertson with a corner. Here's McPherson. Over the ball. Well, the hearts bench below, as I can tell you. A resigned look about Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown and Paul Hegarty. Much they can say now. There's no further exhortations I think they can offer to make any difference to the run of this game. I think the worry for Jim Jeffries now is, you know, obviously a series team. There you are, there's a goal. There's the consolation. John Cahoon with a thundering drive, catching out Andy Gorham. Well, the goal accepted in quiet fashion by Cahoon, but what a good hit this is. The well, Rangers are just a little bit careless here, a little bit casual. But what a strike with John Cahoon. Might give some fire to the rest of the game because it gives it gives Hearts that little bit of credibility back. And I think that's what Ted, at this stage, Jim, or just before the goal, I think Jim Jeffries will be pleased that uh, not to lose any further because I think his credibility was going to get knocked there. But the goal has now given him a chance to get something back from it. John Cahoon with his seventh goal of the season. Goal coming 14 minutes in the end. Well, Alan Johnson has gone down after the clash with Gascoigne, who wants to conduct the discussion with Alan McManus on the way back. Here's Cahoon. Is there to be a twist here? Could. Hearts get another. Bowen did well with the tackle. This is McCall. Will that sting Rangers, I wonder? Here goes Dewey, using his pace, holding off McManus. Sure, the one he pulled down. The call with a shot. Well, the goal again for Hearts came from this very well set up throw in. Yeah, it's well set up, but really a bit of carelessness. I, I think Rangers were just that little bit casual there, but this was almost an, another goal for Rangers. Good running by Dewey. Just your thought at last minute, then shoot my call, knocks it past. And some request for a penalty there when Jury went down under pressure from McManus. I wonder also if that goal was slightly deflected, seeing it again behind the goal. Here's Cahoon. Construction. Well, the offender there was Ian Ferguson. Jim Jeffries has come to life again, sensing that another goal now could make such a difference. Gorham makes the catch. Well, there are arguments going on in the field. Ian Ferguson and John Brown not too pleased with each other. Alan McLaren intervening. Jury on his own again against McManus. Needs some help now. Loader provides it. Well, two good saves by Rousset from Loader. Well, delightful play again from the Dane, but Rousset equal to the task. It's tremendous attacking play once again by, by Loader. But all credit to goalkeeper, blocks the first one, blocks the second one, and really did, did well for his team there. Well, Jim Jeffries has lost that resigned look he had a few minutes ago. That goal has changed things. Here's McCall. Robertson towards Louder up. He's only against McManus. He's still on his feet. And this is Judy shooting the fourth. from Hearts and great work again in the build up by Brian Lowder who's been involved in all the goals this afternoon he certainly had to fight hard to, to recover the ball there but this is what he does so well he sizes the situation up sees Gordon Jury in position gives him it and this time uh, Jury doesn't make any, any mistakes at all but 
you know what a, what an effect this this pairing has had on the game they've been tremendous as a as a front partnership no cover there at all jury all the time in the world Rusi was committed jury gets his 22nd of the season and that's very impressive because over the whole piece he's only started 29 matches 10 substitute appearances 29 starts 22 goals that's extremely impressive McPherson's pass this is Robertson almost looks as though Hearts made Rangers angry there for a moment Johnston now to McPherson fouled by Brown To the free kick, which Steve Fulton will take. The wall has to retreat, the two man wall. If indeed it is to be a wall, no, just one there. Turned back in dangerously by Lawrence, that was good play, and Rangers thought the ball had crossed the line. Killing to the linesman in vain. Goal kick was given, point in for it should have been a corner. Rydok's had to fight so hard for that ball, but good refereeing, he's up with play, he waved play on, but there you are, Rydok says, go on in, go on, Jerry, make a meal of this, and there you are, he does well, takes it past the goalkeeper, and makes it, this man's been brilliant. And the man of the match, the tenants man of the match, Brian Lowdrop, no surprise in that. Masterly performance of a Danish international, scored two, made two, and he's torched up this match defence. Uh, John Robertson still giving all he can to the game, complaining to the referee. So they just have possession again. Well, I think when we look back in the game, and when Hearts look back in the game, they'll look in the moment when Gary Locke twisted his knee as being utterly crucial to the way the game ran. Forced them to make changes, they said they didn't want to make. goes Hart's way. Here's Fulton. Cahoon trying to find space for the cross. Touched on by Lawrence, that'll be a goal kick. Well, dejection there in the face of Lawrence. He's worked so hard since coming on early on to replace Gary Locke. There's the captain, the Hearts, looking forward so much to his big cup final day. It lasted a little more than six minutes. Robertson back to Brown. scoring final of recent times was the Motherwell and the United match of 1991, 4-3 after extra time to Motherwell. And goals have been rather a premium since then in finals. That's all changed this afternoon and then yet the more to come. Gascon. Well read by Mackay, the little flick from Ferguson. Should he chance on? And the positioning of Gorham made that look easy. The target for that ball was Gascoigne. Richie will get there first. Well, that was a strange attempt by Gascoigne. Going for the ball in all the circumstances. Get himself some damage too, and that will be a little worry from the England point of view. play there by Richard Goff. Cole couldn't get there. Here's Johnston now. Robertson goes to the right. McPherson. Well, former Rangers player. Slicing that well wide. Disappointment for him. Alan Johnston hasn't quite had the opportunity this afternoon. Except in flashes to show his remarkable close control. of a 
Equinox and a bit of fatigue. And here's Lauder. Jury's inside looking for his hat trick. Measured for Jury. 5 1 to Rangers. Lauder the provider. Jury the finisher. Well, the face lights up. Rangers manager. He knows that the season is ending on the highest of notes. Magnificent play from Rangers. It's that combination again, isn't it? But, you know, Loudrop, Loudrop does so well, but Jury really breaks his back to get up here, and Loudrop once again just delivers that ball perfectly in the middle. Thank you very much there at Sydney Net. Well, Loudrop looks up here, sees exactly where Jury is, and lays this on a plate for him. And Jury do all the time, there's only one place that would finish. Well, in the meantime, Richard Goff has gone to the bench and suggested to Walter Smith, I think, that he takes Paul Gascoigne off, because he's certainly not running freely. Little reason to keep him on in these circumstances. Headed away by Brown. A call. Loudrop, Robertson goes ahead. Anything could happen now, every time Rangers come forward. A goal opportunity coming up. to McLaren. And the changes to be made. Paul Gascoigne is being withdrawn. I have to wait till the play stops. And Brown still so determined. Taking a heavy one in the end. Free kick to Rangers. Substitution will be made now. No, it's not Gascoigne. It is Ian Ferguson coming off and Ian Durant coming on. I suspect that Gascoigne indicated he didn't want to leave the field early. So Ian Durant comes on. An excellent servant to Rangers. Hasn't had too much first team involvement this season. Enjoy the last few minutes of the final. He is involved straight away. Back now with McCall. So Durant just out for a little bit of a warm up, really, in the closing minutes. to Poynton. Goff's headed out. McCall now to Gascoigne. Good play again from Gascoigne. McCall picks out Robertson. Looking for Jury, I think. McCall wins it back. This is Durant. Well, that would have been some introduction to the game. And goal so quickly, but Rousset made a good save. This is the worrying thing for Hearts because even though the score is uh, as, as the game's almost finished, Rangers still seem so sharp and so determined to get more from it. The a full stretch here against Cahoon. Cahoon took an off there against his old teammate. This is Poynton. Robertson free on the left. Warren's way to the middle for the pass. Tolkien also arriving. Rangers come forward again, it really has been an outstanding performance, Billy. How would you rate that in terms of cup final performances? Well, really, Rangers have performed so well, so far from going to be created from midfield, but more, more importantly, they've been explosive up front, and that's what's counted in. They won this game in a canter. Brian Loudrop, the tennis man of the match, there could be a little argument about that. He made, scored two, he made three, he performed superbly, and Rangers have won the Tennant Scottish Cup.
Jury with a year out with a hat trick. Linking superbly with Lodrop. These two appear to have a splendid understanding. He enjoyed the freedom to run and use his running part and strength. Richard Goff expresses his appreciation. The double has been won again by Walter Smith. Jury takes the congratulations of his manager. He goes to his captain. Oh, the Rangers fans now savouring yet another triumph. So the celebration will go on for a long time here for the final score, a sorry one for Hearts. Hearts one, Rangers five. And Gordon Jury with that amazing record, only 29 starts of the season. 23 goals from that. And with the European Championships coming up, Billy, looks like good news for Scotland. Well, certainly we could, we, we could do with that type of performance in the international sense. And really, he played so, so well up front and he played like, like the type of player you would want in an international game because he wasn't a true centre forward. He played away from the areas, but prepared to run in behind defenders and really had a great game. And down the law is there, he's living his way for Walter Smith. Well, she was, he will be very shortly. And she's arrived there to speak to Walter Smith, the Rangers manager. Walter, congratulations, you've done the double and in the end more comfortable than you could have imagined. Well, I think the second goal maybe made a difference in the game for us. Um, and uh, from then on, we were always liable to catch hearts in the breakaway. And I'm very pleased for the boys because every time there's been a challenge, uh, they've matched it and um, a terrific achievement by them again. Patrick from Gordon Jury, it bodes well for Scotland, of course, too. Well, that's it, he's been playing really well for us. And, uh, you know, his goals were terrific there. Good build-up. Brian, Brian Loudrop involved in everything as well, so pleasing performance from the board. Delighted to have him in. If you keep turning in performances like that, long may last. You look ahead to next season, Walter, you're going for nine championships in a row. How many more new players can we expect at Ibrook? He's on the top here. We, we won the cup again and won the double. We've got a few weeks now to think about next season, so uh, we'll do that then, but we'll go and celebrate tonight. Hope you have a good time tonight. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you. So the discounts the Hearts players go through, collecting their runners-up medals. Well, they came here with very high hopes indeed. They didn't materialise, as Walter Smith said, the second goal in 49 minutes. Given away by this man, Gilles Rousset, so frequently a hero for Hearts. But that was the second and crunch goal, I think. Charlie Bruno still manages a smile going through. The SFA president, Bill Dickey, there with Michael Forsyth, the second of state beside him. So the Rangers players are waiting the moment when they're called up for the medals. And Gary Locke has managed to collect his medal, clearly in some distress. Another crucial moment in the match, the loss of the captain. Uh, Paul Gascoigne produced some marvellous play, especially in the first half again this afternoon. He really is an amazing player, isn't he? And he and Loudrop were the, have been absolute stars for, for Rangers this season. And many games that were very important, they were the ones that carried Rangers through. And certainly in this game, Loudrop's display was absolutely brilliant. So the big moment still awaited when Richard Goff leads Rangers up to collect the Tennant Scottish Cup. Match officials come up, Hugh Dallas from Motherwell, who handled the game very strictly and very efficiently. Bobby Orr, keeper linesman from Kilbarkin. Jim McBurney, his last match as a senior official. And same applies to Louis Thurr, the fourth official. The Hearts players go to the fans, they've given them a lot to enjoy this season. And while the day fell apart for them rather, they still have given a lot of satisfaction, a lot of hope for the future to these Hearts supporters. So many young men in the side. So there is the Scottish Cup bedecked in red, white and blue as Richard Goff appears. They hold it aloft. The third winner's medal. 
the double has been completed once again. Andy Gorham, his third winner's medal also. And for David Robertson, the fourth time he's been up there, once with Aberdeen. The handshakes along the line here. Totally convincing Rangers performance. They started calmly and cautiously. They built up as the game went on, took the lead in 37 minutes through Ryan Lowdrop after wonderful service from Gordon Jury. And from the moment Gilles Rousset allowed that ball to slip under his body in 49 minutes, the result was never in doubt. Ian Ferguson scored the winner in 1987 for St Myrne. Lowdrop gets his first winner's medal. Eric Bo Anderson, who wasn't involved. Eric Clellan is a winner for Dundee United two years ago. Gascoigne completes the double, FA Cup and Scottish Cup. Gordon Petrich goes to one with Dundee United also. John Brown, third winner's medal. McCall also. Looks like a Trojan again in midfield. And Alan McLaren collects his first winner's medal. And he'll have some thoughts later on, no doubt, for his former Hearts colleagues. The goal scoring hero was Gordon Jury. Cup final hat-trick, a moment to be remembered throughout his career, and Walter Smith looks on with calm satisfaction as his player collects the medals. All well, the players will reappear to a tumultuous reception again. Oh, it's slippy down there, obviously. Carl and Rowan, the Rangers team now. Well, the photographs now are being lined up. The sponsors, tenants looking for the team gather around the Banner there, Scottish Cup winners, the tenant Scottish Cup winners of 1996. First time the Rangers side has drawn the new kit to play the play. Well, there's the story, the Scottish tenant Scottish Cup winners. That's going, enjoying himself hugely, forgetting for the moment his England teammates playing hungry at Wembley this afternoon. So now it will be the lap of honour to the Rangers supporters that will go. Well, the hat's there. Giving honour to Paul Gascoigne. Well, who would have believed it, Billy? A 5-1 victory in the cup final. Lots of folk tipping hearts. Well, that's right, and you know, really, we, we thought this was going to be a real game and a real competitive one, but I think Gary Locke's injury is well in the game. Plus the fact the absence of another defensive, defensively-minded player on, on the bench for us, I think that was a difficulty. But, you know, you've now got three subs. A lot of people say it's wise to put a, an additional goalkeeper in, but every now and then I think you've got to have someone who can maybe combine the defensive duties in. That was a thing at the end of the day that made it very difficult for Hearts because they replaced Gary Locke really with, with young Alan Johnson, asked them to do a, a holding job in, in Gascoigne. That's difficult enough for a real quality defender. But an attack minded player like Alan Johnson was far too much and really bit by bit Rangers ascendance it just became a part. And really, if you think about it, just before half time, Hearts did go off the hook a bit when Julie missed that, that chance. But the second half was just a one way possession. And, and really, at the end of the day, the 5 1 really does does uh, flatter the Hearts' performance in that second half because we just could have scored at will. Yes, yeah, indeed, for a long time, a real drubbing looked to be on the cards. 5 1, I suppose you would call a real drubbing, but it could have been worse. Every range of the attack in the second half carrying menace and goal chances appearing all the time. Well, let's hope there's no damage done to the confidence of these young Hearts players. Alan McManus and Paul Ritchie, Alan Johnston, Gary Locke appearing in the first major final and on the end of a hiding.
Well, that's something I certainly hope as well, because they are very talented young players. Obviously, you would like to think they've got a big future in the game, because it's important that we have, we have, we have good teams like Hearts to develop and to challenge Celtic Rangers, because next year, that, you know, obviously Rangers have finished this season saying to everyone, including Celtic, hey, we're at the top of the pile, and you've all got an awful lot to do to challenge us. The tennis man of the match was Brian Loudrup. Brian, a double to win the double. See these fans just want to win, you know, and uh, we've done it today, and hopefully we can be successful in the years to come. The second one was a bit of a gift for you. You must feel some sympathy for Shield. Oh, I have. That's you know these things which happens in a game like that. But I felt we, we needed a second goal. We got that, and finally won the game comfortably. I know that Peter Schmeichel won the double in England. You can go to Euro '96 on an equal footing now. I will be very difficult to stop now. I think. <laughs> So they have one little look at it through a cabinet and that's it. Um, I'm sure the one in the two of the rooms won't get a look at this, but no, great, um, Brian Lowe outstanding, out of this world, Gordon Jury, fantastic. Um, brilliant, credit to the lads this time, not me. Is it beyond your expectations in your first season, Paul, a, a double? I don't know, the lads have been doing it for eight years, just about. Um, it's just nice to be amongst them this time. Looking forward to seeing it, you're a nice to think, to have scoring against some of these lads. I don't know, they seem to be celebrating quite well, so I'll take it easy, maybe. All the best, Paul, thanks. So, Ryan Lodrop and Paul Gascoigne reflecting their satisfaction at the performance this afternoon. And the Rangers supporters all staying here to save yet another triumph on the water strip. Really has an amazing record in management. It may be that there is a big budget to spend, but it has to be spent wisely, Billy. Well, I mean, you, it's amazing that Walter's been knocked. He's been criticised, but, you know, his record stands for itself. And really, I think his tactical aspect today was good as well, because he didn't go personal at hearts. He played it nice and tight at the back. He made sure they weren't going to lose anything early and just allowed his players to develop once they had the confidence to go forward. And once they got that first goal, then it was the really only one winners. And, but all credit to him, it's a tremendous record that he's got, and who would dare criticise it? And the Rangers captain, is Richard gone? I better be quick, you don't want to go No problem, board. Richard. Richard, that's about the, the 12th time you've lifted a trophy as Rangers captain. I, I guess the feeling gets better and better. Uh, I can't describe it, uh, fantastic support again, once again, you know. But um, it gets better every time for me. I mean, these, I don't know how many more of these occasions I've got left, but... Uh, I'm just saving every moment of it. In the end, far more comfortable than I think you could have imagined. Yes, I thought so, but we played well with it, you know? And we took our chances, we were quite clinical. But he said, to be fair, if it wasn't for Roussey, it could have been a lot, a lot more. Yes! Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Richard. OK, thank you very much. Well, the occasion gets better and better, he says. And that's certainly the case by the look of these Rangers players. Patrick Hero was Gordon Jury. Gordon, you were looking to make it third time lucky and you couldn't have asked for anything better. As I say, look up final Hazel, I couldn't ask for any more. And you're running into terrific form for Euro 96 now. Well, that's nice. Uh, as I say, I'm happy with things finished with the season. That's just caps up with enough for me. Obviously, you had a layoff in the middle of the season. Did that break do you some good? I think in hindsight, I did. I uh, uh, six weeks off my head and whatever, and I think uh, I feel fresher now at the end of the season than I ever have. Obviously, you've got to play against a certain Mr. Gascoigne at Wembley. You've been hoping to put one over on him. Certainly look forward to that one, Hazel, and uh, it's, it's certainly one we've got to watch for the performances you showed against the uh, other team this year. And of course, the future's bright. You'll be looking forward to trying to go for nine in a row next season. Well, let, let's enjoy ourselves today, Hazel, and then we'll look forward to next season again. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Marvellous performance from Gordon Jury. His finishing group was there. The one good chance missed just on half time, but that was counteracted by the error by Gilles Rousset in 49 minutes, allowing Brian Loudrop to make it 2-0 to Rangers, and that ended the Hearts hopes. So the clustered round Brian Loudrop down below us. Interviews, photographers, the man of the moment, the hats, the headgear becoming even more extreme as the celebrations go on. And they're down there. 
talking to and sharing the moment with the disabled fans. Always a very happy aspect of the occasion. So, the Tennis Scottish Cup has been won in the most convincing fashion by Rangers, led by a virtuoso performance from Ryan Lowder, who scored twice and laid on three for Gordon Jury. Rangers, outstanding winners. Yes, and it's good to see that that grand old cup final tradition of players wearing daft hats in the lap of honour is very much alive and well. 5-1 it finishes to Rangers. You can't get a more comprehensive victory. Well, in fact, that's the most comprehensive since uh, 1972 when Celtic beat Hibs 6-1. Dixie Dean scored a hat-trick then. Gordon Jury did the same today. And I think we've seen, Willie, uh, one of the great individual cup final, cup final performances, haven't we? Yeah, I, I felt it was a, a super performance uh, from Rangers throughout their team. Uh, they were good in every position. Uh, they were very good in certain positions, but they were out of this world uh, with Brian Loudrop. I thought his performance today was uh, sensational. Mm. Uh, Gordon Jury, I felt, in the second half, had a tremendous second half. You know, we're getting a wee bit, uh, a wee bit critical with him at half-time. And Eamon uh, actually doubted his credibility in terms of scoring goals. <laughs> he went out in the second half. Not only did he score goals, but he brought other players into play. His touch was excellent, his movement was great. And between him and Loudrop, they really carved hearts apart in the second half. Yeah. How did you know him? And you said that. You said he'll probably go out in the second half and score a hat trick, and he did. Yeah, that's right. That was that was a prediction I didn't really want to come true, but uh, <laughs> I think you would have got a few bob on that actually, and if you'd bet the bet. But uh, let, let's pay tribute to Rangers first of first of all. Uh, Loudrop and Jerry in the second half were just fantastic. And Loudrop, I mean, it was like. A hot night through butter in the second half through the Hearts defence. It really was frightening the way he took players on, beat them at will, set up chance after chance after chance. And OK, the, the mistake by Rusi certainly set the ball rolling, but you've got to pay credit to these two players. The Rangers team are very, very strong in all departments. And you just felt that Hearts really didn't get going at all. And uh, I think if you're a Hearts player, you can't really complain too much if that happens. I think it's a far more bitter feeling that if you lose, a, I say, a goal in the last minute through a controversial penalty or something like that. Over the 90 minutes, Rangers were the better team, and I think the Hearts players would just have to hold their hand up and say that that, that was the case. Yes, and perhaps you would say uh, relieved that the scoreline wasn't 2-1 in the end, because it really was a, an awful howler to let in that uh, Brian Loudrop goal, which, uh, which made it 2-1 just four minutes into the second half. Sadly, he made a mistake in the semi-final as well, Willie, against Aberdeen, didn't he? Yeah, they did. Uh, they got away with it this time, but uh, as Brian Loudrop says, Rangers needed the second goal. You know, and really, you, you can't do that in cup finals. It's so vital, so important that you've got someone really reliable at the back. And, you know, from that point onwards, Rangers really dominated and, and took the game by the scruff of the neck. You know, Loudrop obviously showing good skill out there, but he would have been disappointed with the cross. And really, you know, it, Russia should do better there. You know, he's yeah. got to save that one. And it's uh, almost reminiscent of Kenny Doglish's famous goal through Ray Clements' legs, isn't it? And, and so ironic, Eamon, because as we said before the game, he's had an outstanding season for him. He has. I mean, he's, I mean, talking to Hearts supporters who are going to the games week in, week out, I mean, he really became a, a hero, a cult hero with them. He's just been so, so good. I mean, that's something he, would, he wouldn't do in training, mm. you know year after year after year, you just don't see that happening and unfortunately mm. they waited until the cup final for it to happen. You know? And that made it 2-0 uh, and then in, uh, came the, the Gordon Jury goal which in fact made it 3-0 but again Brian Loudrop created every single goal, scored mm. two, made the other three. Now that's some performance really isn't it? It is, uh, th th there's no doubt about his creativity and uh, how he can manage to uh, produce these performances. Sometimes in front of goal though I still feel mm. that he could score more goals if he would have a go himself. Well, they tried to set up Gascoigne for one today, and we all said he should have taken himself, didn't we? He should have. Uh, he'd scored two goals. You would mm. think any player out there would want to score a hat trick in a cup final. Mm -hmm. He gets himself into a position where he really should have a go at goals, but he wants to set Gascoigne up. Perhaps, you know, you're really being overcritical because he's, he's a fantastic player. Here, here's ball. the goal that made it 3 0, in fact. Made by Loudrup, scored by a jury, the first of the hat trick. What about this one, Eamon? Yeah, I mean, it was a fantastic goal. I mean, it's goal of the season stuff. It's all one touch, out to Loudrop, and again, looked up, ball in, Ian Jury, uh, Gordon Jury, sorry, flicked it outside of his right foot. Terrific goal from start to finish. And all one touch stuff, as, as you say.
And at that stage, well, I think the cup was one, wasn't it, when it went, when it went to 3-0. Uh, and even at that stage, at 2-0, you felt if Hearts got to go back, they had a chance for it. But they never really looked like, like producing it, did they? No, they didn't. And, you know, th this sort of a play is what uh, Rangers produced in the second half. But, uh, again, Jury really set the, the, the play up on it, allowed it up, and then it's played into the box and Jury there to finish. Mm. Um, but a, a really super performance by them and uh, some, you know, two individual performances that mm. certainly it was a pleasure for me to, to be here to watch. Uh, because it really was that good. It was, yeah. And, and Gordon Jury, as Jock was pointing out, has scored 23 goals in something like 29 appearances, having yeah. missed a lot of the season through injury. Well, that's that's right. quite a strike rate, isn't it? It is, it's a fantastic strike rate. I mean, they, they, they scored the third goal, and really they started to play some exhibition football, Rangers. Mm. Uh, football that you've possibly never seen in a cup final uh, for years. Well, I've never seen in a cup final. Keeping the ball up, flicking it through legs, back heel. And, uh, you know, it was one of those, you know, as a Hearts supporter, I suppose I was thinking, oh, just, just finish the game, you know, <laughs> finish it off. But then, you know, Hearts got a goal back and, and there was a, a slight glimmer. Mm. Of course, then Rangers stepped up a gear again. Yeah, let's see John Cahoon's goal then. Just perhaps a, the hint of a deflection about it, but it, it, was, a, it was a good shot, Willie, obviously. It, it was a good strike. Um, uh, and watching it afterwards, we did think that uh, there was a deflection, but, uh, you know, it's a good throw in. Uh, it's thrown in, it's laid back to, to John to, to have the strike at goal. And it's a very difficult an angle he's having the strike from. Um, but obviously they've worked at it in training and, uh, you know, Poynton, who can certainly throw them uh, uh, long, throws it in and it's just laid off for John to have a strike. Yeah, and I, I think it just takes a slight deflection, but even if it hadn't taken a deflection, I think Andy Gorham would have been hard push to get uh, anything on that at all. So it's a very good goal from Hart's point of view. It, it gave them a lift at the time, although mm. you were always a bit concerned that if they were going to throw players forward, throw too many players forward, mm. that Rangers had the capability of mm. hitting them in the break, and that's the way it worked out. Yeah. To be fair, I suppose Rangers were getting a little bit casual at the back by that. So did you say it was exhibition mm -hmm. stuff, and, yeah. and Hart's might have got it. They did, and, and that, that basically snapped Rangers out of it. Mm. I mean, they, they then went up the park and scored, but... I mean, they had played some fantastic football Rangers and, and they just dominated the game so much. And Hearts went to a 4-4-2, they took Bruno off and they really went for it a little bit. And it just didn't happen. And there, were, there wasn't a, a five or a ten minute period of pressure where you think, well, Hearts could come back into this game. Mm. Rangers dominated the game. And really, if you look at, you know, they talk about nine in a row for next year. I mean, the way they're playing there just now and the players they have. I mean, I, you honestly can't see Celtic stopping them at all, yeah, and I think so Celtic or anyone, that, or anyone, yeah. yeah. Uh, the fourth goal, uh, again, it was a loudrup jury combination. Loudrup made it, jury scored it, and here's how it looked. Again, loudrup with his pace, getting in behind the defender. Alan McMahon has a rather desperate tackle, and across the face of the goal. You think you'd have hit it first time there, but rather casually takes it round the goalie and sticks it away. It was a great finish. Yes, it's good from a Scottish point of view because we're, we're obviously struggling for strikers for Euro 96, Willie, and uh, we've got one in form, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he certainly was in form today, and uh, I was really impressed in his second half performance, not just uh, with his strike rate and scoring the goals, but also his playing and linking with uh, Loudrop in particular. But it's, it's a great way to pass uh, from Loudrop, just right into the pass. Yeah, that, that's one Jury. of his great strengths, Willie, really, isn't it? The, the way to pass at Loudrop. It, it is. I mean, he's got great balance here. He, he's, he, you know, he's being wrestled almost to the ground, but he keeps his balance. The head's always up. He's running with the ball at pace, but the head's up. He's looking for the pass, right into the pass of Jury. Jury does well because if he'd have had it first time, then perhaps Rusey would have got it, but uh, he checks inside and finishes it. Yeah, it seemed that the two youngsters, Richie and McManus, once Bruno had gone off and they'd gone to the flat back for it, had looked almost demoralised by what was happening. Yeah, it, it was hard for them. I mean, it, the, the game was lost effectively and, and Rangers were, were knocking the ball about so well and really, I mean, if you were a Hearts player out there, you just wanted the, the final whistle to come along. Mm. And that, that's a disappointing part of it. I think it, when they analyse the game, you know, tomorrow, the next day, when they're looking back on it, they'll think, well, we should have done better. I don't think really any Hearts player played to his full potential. There was one or two that got past marks, but mm. most of them were rather subdued, mm. and possibly the young ones were, were caught up in the atmosphere of the final. They'd never been to a final before, and it, it all proved a bit too much. But look on the positive side. They've, they've made Europe. They've had the experience of a cup final, and they've got to take it on from there. And hopefully we'll be a better team for, for the rather chastening experience of, of losing 5-1. But uh, let's see the goal which gave Gordon Jury his hat-trick. As we said, the first in a Scottish Cup final for 24 years since Dixie Deans did it in 1972. And in the end, a fairly simple goal, I suppose. Yes, it is. It's, it's just once again Loudrop going down the right-hand side of the park. But again, he's got the head up. He's looking all the time. 
uh, Jury making the, the late run into the box and finishing it off. It is a, a, another uh, example of how well on the day both of these uh, players worked together. And Walter Smith obviously delighted with that one. And, and so he should be because his team performance overall was great. And that was one of the, the, the highlights of it. But really loud drop. You know, we, we can't, you run out of words to describe the player, he is, he is so good, and he just lifts this ball up, he knows Judy's there, but it's an inch perfect, I mean, Gordon Judy doesn't have to break his stride at all, right onto his head, and really can't miss that one. Absolutely, yeah. Well, let's uh, hear from uh, the disappointed, I'm sure, uh, Beeson Hearts manager, Jim Jeffries. He's with his 11. Jim, you've still got a smile on your face, very many commiserations, it all went wrong when Gary Locke was taken off in the early stages. Well, obviously, we... We didn't start the game too well, and that was a bit of a blow to lose Gary, because we have to then change things that we would be preparing for. But, um, you know, we, we probably had our best spell of the game when Rangers went up and scored uh, the first goal. And to go in at half-time, the game's still alive. But we can't legislate for what happened. I mean, Gilles Russi has been magnificent all season, and, and had pulled up another couple of good saves today. But, you know, it's just one of them. I bet he wished the ground would just swallow him up but uh how is he Jim? Ah, he's a bit distraught he's a big honest guy and everything like that but i mean what was disappointing was that we know that was a big you know that let rangers relax and you know what you have to do here is you've got to play really well we said before the game if we play well we're in our chance and you've got to do that especially when we're in the mood because i thought rangers were really up for it today and uh you know once they got the second one and then the third one we did we did well to get back into the you know get a goal and put maybe respect with it we just seem to lose our uh, concentration and their shape and there were some things we were left with too many attackers against the defenders because we were trying to get back in the game but you know we, ju we just seem to have lost it there and we could have lost we could have lost more we have to be honest about it but um, you know we're, as I say we, we needed to play well and we thought if we did play well we'd be on a chance but we didn't play well and the uh, Rangers did and we got punished for it we got punished uh, severely so you know they're great players and uh, and as I say, they played well today and you've got to be up for it to match them. So we've enjoyed it and there's a lot of young boys there and they'll enjoy the experience and we'll try and get back next year and put a better show in. Well, I hope you do, Jim, because clearly it has been a wonderful season for you in many respects. You're well up there in the league, you're already in Europe and we look forward to seeing your performances there next season. Commiserations today and I hope it goes well for you next season. Thanks, Yes, Jim Jeffries uh, trying very hard to put a, a brave face on uh, that 5-1 uh, defeat here at Hamden today. Rangers once again have done the double and uh, the gulf which is opening up clearly between Rangers and the rest of Scottish football perhaps is worrying to some people and it's very clear now just exactly what Hearts and Aberdeen and Celtic and anyone else with aspirations to prevent Rangers winning nine in a row have got to do. Now let me give you one or two details before we leave. Uh, the man of the match of course was Brian Loudrup. Who else made two? Uh, made, uh, uh, three and scored two, and uh, the winner of the competition was William Lavery. Of the many who predicted Brian Loudrup would be the man of the match, William Lavery is the one who wins those two tickets for the England-Scotland game during Euro 96 at Wembley four weeks from today, which, of course, you can see live and uninterrupted here on BBC television. So congratulations to William, and go enjoy the game at Wembley. Don't forget that we'll be back tonight at 11.20. Rob McLean with Sports Scene, The Road to Hamden. Highlights of today's Tenant Scottish Cup final. And also highlights of England against Hungary. The match played this afternoon at Wembley. I can give you the score there, incidentally. It finished England 3, Hungary 0. So highlights of those two matches, 11.20, BBC Scotland on 1. Before that, in fact, at uh, around 5.50 tonight, uh, for those of you interested in golf, the uh, highlights of day three of the Benson and Hedges International from the Oxfordshire with Colin Montgomery, of course, going into the third round, just one off the lead. So some golf coming up at 10 to 6. That's about it, uh, about it from us for today. Many thanks indeed to our guests, Willie Miller and Eamon Bannon, who have enjoyed the most comprehensive Scottish Cup final victory for 24 years. Rangers 5, Heart of Midlothian 1, a hat-trick for Gordon Jury, Brian Loudrup, the man of the match. The Rangers fans go home happy. They've done the double again. From all of us here at Hamden, thanks for being with us. Goodbye for now.
this is bbc scotland on one.